Welcome to the Viking Spotlight. This is a podcast about people, events, and projects in the North Canton City School District, and I'm your host, Jeff Wendorf. Today, we're talking with Mr. Rob White, who's the Hoover High School Associate Principal responsible for Hoover High School's Career Tech Program. And welcome, Mr. White. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, this is fun. It'll be a great conversation and uh, very interested to hear about our career tech program and uh, and how that works at Hoover and all the neat things that happens for our kids. So what, to, to kick things off, what is career tech education? Career technical education is a series of courses that um, focus on a specific career pathway. Students can learn more about that pathway, gain valuable knowledge and skills, And oftentimes in these career tech courses, students are able to do, they're able to have hands-on lessons that accompany the instruction. Okay. So it's a group, it's it's geared towards a career path or a skill set, basically, if you will. And uh, so I should have asked the very first question, the most important. Tell us about Rob White and your professional career. You've uh, been in Hoover for a number of years now and focusing on career tech. How did that happen? And how'd you get into administration? Well, I've been really blessed. I was able to teach at Marlington and had an absolute great time teaching, uh, primarily at the middle school level. And then I was able to go to Louisville High School and uh, work as an assistant principal and worked along some great administrators there. Uh, And it was a great experience, too. And I was there for six years. And this is my 10th year at North Canton Schools, all of those being at Hoover High School as an assistant principal. And I have really um, been able to broaden my understanding of education primarily through career technical education. So you've focused on career tech since you've been at Hoover? That's correct, yes. Great, great, good. So 10 plus years. And uh, yeah, I passed through Louisville once too. And I think the same administrator may have made the mistake of hiring me at that time. But uh, yeah, that was long before you. So I'm, (laughs) I'm a little bit, I'm a decade or so older than you. So anyways, so tell us about the guidelines. So career tech, I think in the olden days, uh, might have been called vocational education, but now it's called career tech. Um, tell us about the requirements or guidelines to, to take courses in career tech. So there's not a whole lot of guidelines in order to take those courses, but there certainly are things that we as a school district and that teachers for career technical education need to accomplish. First of all, every student in the state of Ohio has to have access to career technical education. Um, schools accomplish this in a variety of ways. They may offer um, pathways through their own district to exclusively to their own students, or they may partner with other schools in the area and offer them either in their own school or at some of those other schools. And then finally, we have what we uh, maybe are most familiar with, and that is JVSs, where students will have career technical courses that are offered to them um, through at a high school where all of the students there are taking career tech courses. Right, so our local ones are RG Drag and um, Portage Lakes Career Center and those, but that's that's usually, and we'll talk about what a compact is and how we deliver career tech services in a second, but basically that's a, a place where a group of districts um, pitch into and they are, the kids are there all day. That is correct. Yeah, and a lot so they're of- getting their math, English, science, social studies, plus their career tech courses all at RG Drake. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, okay. uh, a few other stats f- regarding career technical education. There are 91 different groupings in the state of Ohio. Ohio serves 125,000 students in career technical education. Wow. So there's a lot of students that take career tech courses. And uh, our graduation rate for those career tech students is 97.2%. That's 10% wow. above the average for those uh, for everyone who graduate or who goes to high schools in Ohio. And finally, 25% of the students enrolled in career tech courses earn at least three college credit. That's 100,000 college credits. Wow from career tech students every year. That's crazy. That's awesome. Great. Guys, what an opportunity because, you know, I mentioned vocational school and uh, some of the adults listening might remember it as uh, vocational school, but career tech is different. Used to be it was a junior senior program primarily, and you went into um, that course or those programs just for two years. But I think I'm hearing you say that this is a series of courses, not necessarily a year long program, and they've broken it down into courses now that even start and I, I'm kind of leading the question here when when can our kids take their first career tech course in at North Canton City Schools our students can start as early as eighth grade 
So we have students that come up to the high school, take a high school level course for high school credit in eighth grade. And the unique thing about that is that opens up an opportunity for them to complete that program that they start in eighth grade by maybe their sophomore year. And then in their junior and senior year, they could even complete another program. And we have a handful of students that do that just about every year. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into what those might be. And, and I know I'm thinking about pre-engineering and some things that but we'll talk about the particular programs in a second. But um, we mentioned um, career centers and so on, but we don't offer our kids career tech in that manner. We're a member of a compact. So we approach it a little differently. And uh, tell us about the Stark County Career Compact, which is the one we're in. Um, could you tell us what, you know, how schools participate, what it means, and, and how we provide those services for our kids? Sure. We do participate in that Stark County Career Compact that is open to our friends from Glen Oak, Jackson, and Lake High Schools. So the four of us will share students for part of a day. As you referenced before, sometimes at a Career Technical Center or a JVS, students will go there all day. In this case, students come for, typically it takes about half a day, maybe three or four periods away from their home school. In our compact, we have over 35 programs. That's a lot. That's a lot more than you can have at just a career center. That is correct, yes. Or one school in in particular, yeah. So our kids have access to, you said, 35 uh, optional career programs. Now, some of those are duplicated. We have some real popular ones. Um, For instance, construction is offered at Hoover, at Glen Oak, and at Jackson High School. So three schools happen to have a construction program. There might be a little different flavor to each one of those, but there are some... um, there are some duplication of those yeah, programs. And I know med tech's the same. I know we have a med tech in the program that's geared towards sports medicine, one geared towards nursing, and I'm not sure what the other one's geared towards, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's a different variety or focus, I guess. Yeah, great. Well, the uh, our career compact has uh, four high schools. You mentioned those. And what other career compacts are there or, or CTE programs are there in Stark County? So CTPDs, um, Career Technical Planning Districts, there are six of those in our county. Um, So the one that we referenced, and we also talked about RG Dreg, Canton City Schools has their own, and it's exclusive for Canton City Schools. The same with Maslin City. They have their own program as well. Um, Canton Local leads one for Perry, Canton South High School, East Canton and Sandy Valley. And then finally, Alliance is in a compact with Marlington Local and Salem City Schools, which is outside of the county, but that's part of their compact. So there are six of those planning districts located throughout Stark County. Okay, great, great. Well, what, what career tech programs do we offer at Hoover and in our, in our compact, I guess? But uh, two questions. What, what do we offer in our walls here? But then also, what are some opportunities for our kids to take outside of our walls in our compact? So inside of our school, we have a biomedical sciences that is part of the health science career pathway. We also have business management. We have construction technology, culinary arts, engineering, interactive media, which is kind of like a graphic arts or web design type program, medical technology, teaching professions, and video productions. So those nine are housed inside of Hoover High School. Outside of Hoover High School, there is music production, there is legal studies, there's cosmetology, there's horticulture, there's a real variety Mm -hmm. of other programs that are available. So our students have access to all of ours, obviously, plus any of those others that they may want to attend. Right, in the compact in general, first of all. And then if we can't provide it there, we even occasionally make... uh, arrangements for a student to attend a um, program that the four high schools that are in the compact don't offer like uh, HVAC or something like that. That is, that is correct. Yes. That's not the norm, but it happens occasionally. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Great. Well, you know, and, and I mentioned, you know, showing my age, the vocational programming and the way things used to be is uh, those were technically, um, well, I don't know if technically, but they tended to lean towards um, non-college tracks um, your manufacturing, auto body, auto mechanics, and some of those things that were not college track, but that's it's not the case today. We still have a few of those, but tell us a little bit about uh, um, you know those programs, and you can hear them when you hear if you repeat our particular programs at Hoover High School. They're not necessarily the heavy manufacturing or industrial; they're more technical. Yes, that is true. So we still, as you mentioned, we still have several of those pro- programs, such as auto body, engine repair. 
uh, a popular one that there used to be was small engine repair, and they may work on like lawn mowers or weed whackers and that sort of thing, welding, drafting, plumbing. Those are kind of some of the ones of the past and the present. Right. We still yeah. have a lot of those programs today, um, but we have a lot more. We have engineering. We have teaching. We have medical programs that folks go into before becoming a doctor, a surgeon, a physical therapist, mm-hmm. a dentist, and so forth. So there, there certainly are a lot of um, options for students today. Sometimes it's exploration, and they find out this is not what I thought it would be. I can't handle the sight of blood. I don't want to work with young children, or whatever the case may happen to be. Right. They find that out through career technical education. I can't fix things as well as I thought I could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in today's world, you know, it used to be that if you were mechanically inclined, you could fix so much, but with so much um, going to yeah. computer chips and that sort of thing now, it's much more challenging. So to have this specialized career focus courses, people are able to gain that expertise. Right. How, tell me a little bit about um, our numbers, about the number of kids that we have, uh, percent of kids in Hoover High School, we'll say, and then maybe even a compact of that participate in CTE as far as, you know, because you mentioned the, the freshman, sophomore year being able to get into those programs. What do our numbers look like? Well, at Hoover High School, we have between 1,400 and 1,500 students pretty consistently every year. I would also say consistently we have well over 700, usually between 800 and 1,000 students enrolled in career technical courses. So well over half of the student body is enrolled in at least one career technical course. Throughout our compact, we have approximately 2,000 students that are enrolled in career technical Mm -hmm. education courses. So there's a large percentage of students that are enrolled in career tech. We have just over 6,000 in our compact as far as students in the high schools. Um, so over 30% of our students are enrolled in career technical education. Right. That's awesome. And, uh, that, that's great. Now I know we have buses coming back and forth from here to Glen Oak and Jackson and back and forth and them to us and Lake and so on. So it's a, it's a pretty neat thing to see our kids, um, participating in their homeschool still for the main core subjects. And then they're getting their career tech stuff at, at maybe another building or, or something. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think yeah. that it allows those students to really have a sense of their own school pride too. They come to us for two or three periods a day, but they still have, as you mentioned, their core classes and maybe some specialty classes at their own high schools, which allow them to really connect with their own high schools too. Right. Yeah. Pretty cool. Good stuff. Well, I know my daughter got involved in legal studies in high school and uh, finished that program and actually became an attorney. I don't know. It must've been because of her mom, but um, she was, and her teachers, she was, yeah. So she's a practicing attorney and went through the legal studies program, just had a ball with it, had a blast and really knew that at that time, yeah, this is something I think I want to do at least the earlier part of my career, maybe the rest of my life. So good yeah, stuff. That, that's great. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, um, anything, um, uh, advantageous for career tech kids to, to take? And, you know, you mentioned a little bit about, uh, exploration before you go and commit to college or to an apprenticeship and a career, you get to do a little sample. Any other advantages for career tech participation? Well, there's a lot of unique things that go on with career technical education at Hoover. One thing we talked about is students can begin in as early as eighth grade. That is not the norm. Some places will allow you to start your sophomore year. I mean, it's kind of gotten a little younger than that old junior-senior model. But to have those opportunities available for eighth graders is really something that's unique. Um, We do, as I mentioned before, we do have a few students that complete two career tech programs throughout their high school or maybe eighth grade through 12th grade Mm -hmm. years. So that's pretty unique. We have a culinary arts program that has a food truck. There's not right. many programs out there that have a food truck right. that they operate. So that's that's pretty neat. And um, this spring, we are expecting a robotic arm to come in for the engineering program. Yeah, I know it's been ordered, and the, the grant for it came through. And I know our teacher's been trained, and he's anxiously awaiting for that big Amazon package to show up. But, uh, <laughs> right, yeah, right. That's pretty cool. And they do, I mean, the Fab Lab and the things that we've had for actually a number of years is – is you know we have a functioning CNC and 3D printers and all those things in the in the uh, computer science area and the things that um, that they do there it's pretty cool yes. and robotics team of course yes yes we have a very active robotics team that does very well performs uh, has gone to national competitions before and speaking of national competitions we have a business management program that has competed locally 
and won and then has gone on and completed competed nationally and actually won the national competition four of the last five years. Right. Pretty amazing. Yep. I believe we had the teacher for that program in last year to talk about the the uh, the run that they've had as far as, you know, having kids develop and design and build a, a business, actually, and then take it to competition. Some of them even sell the business when they're done. Yeah. And, and that's pretty cool. What an so, opportunity for yeah, students. Yeah, yeah. It's just awesome. And I know some of them are out there running business now because I, I know a couple of uh, folks that are doing that that I see my neighbors use. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. So so how do kids get interested? How do we market this to kids? How do we how do kids learn about the programs and, and so on? What's your method for getting the word out, I guess, or the word out to parents, too? Because not a lot of seventh and eighth graders are thinking about what they're going to do after high school yet. Well, I'll tell you, I don't do a whole lot the teachers really sell the programs. So the students get interested really from the teachers and from word of mouth. I think that's our best form of recruitment. We do have different recruitment activities that we do here at the school. We allow the eighth graders to come in while we're giving the ACT to juniors on one side of the building and the rest of the student body isn't here that day. The eighth graders come in and visit the career tech program so they can have some exposure to that. Um, We also allow students in their freshman year to go visit career tech programs. But really the selling point is the teacher's connections with students. And that's what it's really all about is that's what we're here for, to make those connections with students and to provide these opportunities for them to learn. And that's what sells it. We have great teachers in career tech ed here at Hoover High School. It's about relationships and it starts with the teachers, but it's also about strong programs that those teachers help run. So, and great administrators. So (laughs) thank you for what you do for that and supporting the teachers and the kids and, and uh, so I think last week, last Thursday, you were offered a, you uh, had an opportunity fair and uh, had over 60 vendors in a variety of different areas to have a opportunity fair. Uh, 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 yeah, it was neat to go in there and see all those businesses and uh, tell us a little about that. Yeah, that, it was a great experience. Um, we had over 260 folks come through the opportunity fair. It's our inaugural one. So um, we hope that that continues to grow as time goes on. But uh, we called it an opportunity fair and not a job fair, not a career fair, because it's beyond just careers and jobs. For instance, the mil- or I'm sorry, it's beyond, yeah, it's beyond just careers and jobs. We had the military that was represented there, four branches of the military who were present. We had uh, at least six local schools that were there. We had health institutions. We had obviously manufacturers and other careers that were there too. But it really um, was an opportunity for our students to go and learn more and find out more. And some of the students came away um, pretty blown away with some of the things that are out there available right here in right. our own community. Yeah, right. Yeah, there was there was heavy manufacturing. There was, I guess, light industrial stuff. There was technical things. You mentioned military colleges. Um, Ohio Means Jobs was there. They yes, had a table. yes. That was pretty cool to see. And uh, we even had a table, as the North Canton City Schools had a table, trying to recruit some kids to become teachers and actually bus drivers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, great. In so, fact, I saw a list on their table that had some students down there awesome. for future yeah, employment. Yeah. Well, we're going to double-check their driving record, <laughs> But, yeah, <laughs> as soon as they become eligible, we'll be calling them. Yeah, yeah. So that's great. That well, It was a neat day. I was able to get down there and see that. And uh, I, I hope that the um, the businesses that came saw that it was worthwhile. And what a great uh, way to show our kids to have them walk around at, at an opportunity fair or, you know, the like to, to share their professionalism. And um, so on, I noticed some classes had on khakis and ties and yeah, they were dressed up and yeah. So, and that's a, that's a great thing, especially on a day when the high school was spirit week and it's pajama day. (laughs) So the kids, kids took it serious and uh, it was a great thing. So thank you for doing that. And that's who we wanted to serve most were the students. Right. We provided an opportunity for our community to come into. And then thirdly, hopefully it helped some of the local businesses, colleges, trade unions, and so forth uh, recruit some of their future um, employees and so forth. Right. And we live in a very rich uh, community as far as uh, colleges with six local, very local, very near um, universities and colleges. And uh, that's pretty cool to see and uh, great relationships with them, with student teachers, but also our graduates, you know, a large portion of our kids uh, graduate and stay in Stark County for college and, and university. So good. Well, what else, what do we miss? 
One thing that I failed to mention was when we were talking about the programs that we offer here at Hoover and through our compact, we are missing manufacturing. We have no manufacturing programs. And as you can imagine, it takes a lot to start up a manufacturing program. Uh, We have explored uh, welding specifically. Um, If there's anybody out there listening that has an extra million dollars laying around, (laughs) I've got a good place where you can bring it. But um, that's that's the one thing that we're kind of missing from our compact. We have some space. We have some space or could make some space fairly easily. It's not like we have to build a building for it. But uh, I know you've been working on welding quite a bit and you've had some great uh, efforts and talked to nearly every uh, welding manufacturer in the area and in the region even. And um, yeah, so we're looking at that and uh, maybe some uh, manufacturing or um, yeah, that uh, could go along with that. But uh, there's a gap in our community in the need in the industry for welders and and um, uh, fab and, and those kind of things. So folks with some high skills in those areas. So an opportunity for kids to be able to, to get some things. But we yeah, to run a program, start a program, it's uh, over a million dollars to start. And that's a that's a pretty big ticket to to start that program but we're working on it i know you are yeah Yeah, very hard so well mr white we're very appreciative of you coming today and and um you know we're so excited and proud of our program and uh what you do and what you lead and uh anything else you want to share with us at all if you have any questions about career technical education at hoover feel free to check with your counselor contact me and we would be happy to share some of the options that are available for yeah, our so, students. And the website's pretty good. Uh, I'll have to yes. admit, yeah, you look on our website at northcantonschools.org and uh, find just click for career tech and at the high school and you'll find uh, all the programs and some pretty neat stuff and, and some great more inf- in-depth information. So very proud of our career tech education at, um, at Hoover High School and in our career compact. But uh, also proud of you. Thanks for what you do and uh, and getting kids what they need. That's uh, maybe a little bit out of the norm and a different different uh, track for kids that that want something a little different so thank you it's my privilege to be here thank you very much appreciate you being on the team well thanks for being here today and uh, we appreciate our listeners certainly and uh, always invite our our listeners to uh, reach out to us to uh, make suggestions or ideas um, request for podcast or or uh, guest what you might want to learn more about about north canton city schools and uh, always um, reach out to us either at the district office at our phones but certainly by email at viking spotlight at north schools.org and we always welcome your thoughts regarding the podcast and any other district business actually so feel free to reach out we uh, certainly thank our listeners and um, one final thought that is to go vikings